India is a country that has been completely ruled by the rural sector. The entire ideology is going to be about the rural sector. We are going to understand rural development and the major issues that are governing started hitting the liberalization. The rural sector was not much into prominence. Development of human resources, including literacy, Good morning and welcome to the first session of chapter 6, Rural Development. India is a country that has been completely ruled by the rural sector. 80% of our population live in the rural sector, so it is very apt for all of us to know and to understand about the rural development of our country. So in the coming topics, in the coming slides, we are going to talk about what is rural development and the importance of it. So quickly moving forward, the topics that we are going to cover today in this session are the introduction and what is rural development. So this entire concept, the entire ideology is going to be about the rural sector, its prominence and how rural development actually contributes to the development of nation. Moving forward, what are the factors that we are going to learn today? These are the highlighters. These are the important points that we are going to cover today. The first one, we are going to understand rural development and the major issues that are governing. We are going to appreciate how crucial the development is needed for the overall economic development. So that's also a very important factor that we need to understand. We are also going to look into the credit and marketing systems in the rural India. One of the very, very crucial part, why? Because the rural India always needs support in terms of finance, in terms of the development and infrastructure. We're going to learn about the diversification in terms of their livelihoods and the significance of organic farming and the other methods that have been followed in the rural India. So let's try to go into the concept of rural India and try to understand how the development begins. Moving forward. The introductory part to rural India. It has always been a fascination for most of us to really understand about the rural segment or the rural sector. Now, if you know that most of the time, the rural India is always a sector that has been ignored. Rather, I would say that it has not been given much of importance. The reason is quite simple because the rural India is one sector where we have not paid too much of attention. We always believe that, yes, that's a rural sector. It, it is only a sector that is being governed by agriculture. It's only a sector that where people live through some menial methods, some primary methods altogether. And that's not an area of development to be talked about. So that was probably one of the reasons till the year 91, 92, until we started hitting the liberalization, the rural sector was not much into prominence at all. Even at the year 2004, probably we were just struggling to make a roadmap to understand how rural India can be developed. Now, moving forward, when you start looking into the slides, when you start trying to understand the development of rural India, the first thing that hits the mind is agriculture, which is the major source of income, major source of livelihood for those hundreds and thousands of farmers who struggle every day to keep us alive. So we need to understand and appreciate the factor that agriculture is the backbone of Indian economy. We need to give priority to agriculture. We need to take agriculture to the next level as far as possible. At any given point of time, if agriculture is not supported, if agriculture is not being provided the necessary benefits, then the country cannot survive. And agriculture being the mainstream in the rural sector, this needs to be supported, this needs to be governed at any given point of time. Second thing, our father of nation, the great person who struggled and helped us in getting freedom, he had once said, the real progress of India does not mean simply growth, but it means the development of villages. So our father of nation, Mahatma Gandhi had once said very clearly that if India has to develop. And if we have to spell the word development, really, it means that every single village in India has to be developed. Every single sector needs to be developed. Every single village has to have all the facilities, all the benefits of that of a city life. 
The idea of village and development are two factors that we are going to try to understand here. Reason being is that the village sector never had the benefits of an urban sector. When you move from an urban place to that of a village, you will automatically feel the difference in the quality of life, the living standards, the amenities, the environment, the society, the way things are being looked all together. Which means to say that the village part of India definitely requires a lot of development because the importance was not given to them in the last 70 years. So somewhere down the lane, we need to understand, we need to appreciate and we need to give that prominence in terms of development towards the rural sector. So the village development, the concept itself, the village development factor needs to be emphasized to such a great extent, then only the overall development can be seen in such a large country. Now, moving forward. What is rural development? We are really going to now decipher this word. We are going to decode it and we're going to understand the real meaning of rural development. The first one, development of human resources, including literacy. More specifically, I would also talk about health, the land reforms and productive resources. Let's try to understand each one of this point in detail. The first one that we are talking about is development of human resources in terms of literacy. It is always important and a top priority that we need to understand unless and until we make India 100% literate, we have not really stepped up to the pedestal of development. Why? Because the concept of development begins with the intellectual capital. The concept of development begins with educating every single citizen with the basic knowledge that is needed for his life. So unless and until we go to the rural India, we approach each and every person, make each and every citizen literate, we are not really making development. So literacy is definitely the top priority of this mission. Moving on, health. Health of each and every citizen is not a choice. It is mandatory. It is something that we have to take it. We have to go by it. You cannot have choices. You cannot have options there. So every village in India needs to be covered under a healthcare plan and there needs to be hospital and healthcare units which can take care of the life of our farmers and the poor people who are living there. Their life cannot be at stake. Their life cannot be taken lightly or for any advantage. It needs to be given equal priority and we need to take care of the health. So healthcare mission is that second priority that we need to keep in our mind. The land reforms till now in the rural sector, what has been happening is that we have been seeing that agriculture taking different kinds of methods and different kinds of turns altogether. But what about the land reforms? There are acres and acres of land in India which are still under doubt, which are still under a position where we do not know whether they are how classification is done, whether they are being used for agriculture or they're being used for some other purpose. So we need a land reform policy that is able to help the farmers to get what they want, that is able to define to the farmers what exactly they need to do. So that is where I would always say that the concept the concept of land reforms is mandatory in terms of rural development. With that, we are also going to talk about the development of productive resources. What is the development of productive resources? Development in terms of the natural growth, development in terms of all the activities that can help the people to overcome the situation and build the country all together. So development of those resources is also of high importance in terms of the rural development. Moving forward, what is this rural development in terms of infrastructure? We're going to talk about this in a big way. Why? Because it's highly important and special measures for the alleviation of poverty. Now, two factors where we are going to govern ourselves, where we are going to give importance. What do you mean by infrastructure? Infrastructure will not just talk about those big metro trains or the bridges or those highways or the expressways that are being connecting those cities. 
we are also going to talk infrastructure in terms of development for the villages. Now, when I talk about infrastructure as a developmental measure for the villages, we need to understand that we have to start with the roads, we have to start with transport facilities, we need all those basic amenities, connecting facilities that can keep the villages connected with cities, connected with every single part and every single corner of India. So what we want to see here is that when the roads are being constructed, we also need to give importance on electrification, we also need to give importance on road safety measures, connectivity, local transport, all these factors have to be kept as a part of infrastructure so that every village is able to experience the same kind of facility what an urban city is able to get. So infrastructure will be a top priority when it comes to the mission rural development. The second factor, special measures have been done for the elevation of poverty. Now, there is a conception or there is a fact that comes in the minds of people saying that villages in India means poor people. When we talk about rural development, we automatically link it to poverty. The reason is that we believe that these people are still under the poverty zone. They are still under a factor where they are not able to come out, where they are not able to recognize, where they are not able to find out ways to come out of poverty and develop themselves. So our ideology in rural development is that government has to find out ways to elevate poverty, to bring out from that poverty situation, make the people believe that they can also come up in life and they can also build a better system, a better India altogether. So we will try to take measures, we will try to find out ideologies by which we can provide those rural people better employment, better skill sets so that they can become even more standardized in terms of living and in terms of earning money. Now, moving forward, what is rural development? How is the scholars and the experts who are trying to understand this? They identify decline in public investment since 1991 is probably one of the reasons behind this. Let us try to understand this point. In 1991, when India opened its door, trying to become a competitive nation, trying to become a nation embracing the open economy, liberalization, privatization and globalization, we somewhere forgot that we have to invest, we have to pay attention to the rural India. Probably that is one of the reasons why experts say that the investment factor in terms of rural India has been considerably low rather than to that of urban cities. Now, they also argue that inadequate infrastructure, lack of employment, lack of resources have been one of the reasons for the development in terms of coming down on the rural sector which is quite true. Why? Because if you look into the rural sector from 1991, say about till 2004-05, we really did not take measures of developing the roadways, transport, connecting them or bringing them onto the employment platform, making them more enriched. That was probably one of the reasons why a lot of people from the rural sector migrated out of their villages, came to different parts of the cities, searching for jobs, searching for education and better living conditions. So somewhere down the lane, we were also responsible in terms of a brain drain that happened internally. So this is very, very important for us to know. The third thing which I would like to talk about is the impact of this phenomenon can be seen from the growing unrest among the farmers or the distrust, I would say which is making them to lose interest in agriculture and start moving towards small and menial jobs or unskilled labor jobs in the city life altogether. Now, when you read the newspaper every day, you would try to understand and feel on this factor that hundreds and thousands of farmers are still suffering in different parts of our country. Reason being is that agriculture is not paying them the real value altogether. So many a times, Farmers feel that probably agriculture as a profession itself is not giving them enough scope for earning or for growing. So that is the reason they always say that I am not able to grow with it. I am not able to survive with it. So let me go away from this. So that is one of the reasons why farmers feel that this could not be considered a factor. This could not be considered a growth segment altogether. 
against this background now what is happening is that critically if you start understanding and explaining about the situation there are a lot of times where India really wants to promote agriculture they really want to take it they want to make the rural India even more diversified so we are trying to see on platforms where we can take agriculture make it grow further and make it believe on the factors that economic development is possible on the rural side or on the rural sector altogether now moving forward with this we come to the conclusion of the first session i hope and believe that the session was interesting informative and educative in the coming sessions we are going to understand about the different factors that are governing the rural development and the markets altogether until then stay blessed stay tuned and stay enlightened forever thank you once again for joining me today